communications are typically binding. So when the CEO talks to the president of your company, it's contractually binding. But if the COR and um, you as the team lead are talking, that's typically not contractual binding because neither one of you have the ability to enter or change the contract. So you guys can, so typically what happens is you have your conversations at the lower level first to figure out what to do, and then these two get involved to make the final decision. Um, they also must document requirements of proper technical interpretation. So if I come to you and I say, um, oh, you asked me to paint this room a neutral color, and I'm, I'm bringing you a, a paint sample of this eggshell color and asking you if it's okay, then the core would need to document that. Because I'm asking for technical interpretation. Do you consider this a neutral color? And the contracting officer is giving me, representative is giving me direction as to what neutral color means. So they would document that. And that would be part of the contract law. Um, so a technical direction clause. So while something like this, neutral color, might be acceptable, if there was a clause in the contract that said the contractor must continually refresh the technology on this, that would not be something within the contracting officer representative's purview. That would have to go to the CO. Um, any kind of request for information or action from the contractor within 30 days. So if I ask this question about, is this color neutral, the government has to respond normally faster than 30 days, so that, because otherwise, if they wait 30 days, I can't paint until I get this figured out. Um, and then if they have the opportunity to approve our subcontractors, um, that some agencies have a right to do that for very specific reasons, so they would have to do that. Um, so, Documentation, as I mentioned, is key to establishing and protecting the government's rights in a, any kind of dispute situation. And they have to document all oral conversations so that there's a written record of those. Okay. Any questions about core contracting officers or um, documentation? Okay. All right, so now let's talk about what the contractor has to do post-award. We started talking about some of this before, so I'm just going to gloss over those parts. But just like the contracting officer representative, we have to know exactly what's in the contract. Because guess what happens? Sometimes you have a proposal team that writes proposals, and then they win it, and then they go away and work on the next proposal, and you've got a brand new team starting out the contract. Um, sometimes you have overlap between those two groups. So you want to make sure you understand the nuances of the contract type um, and that you understand all the piece parts of the contract. What is it that you actually have to deliver? And then um, you want to set up your cost structure. So you would have a separate cost center. Everybody know what cost centers are? You would have to have a co separate cost center for your government contracts and then with each contract that you get, you want to set up a separate one so that you split out your cost and capture them accurately. So in order to do this, you put together, you understand all the pieces of the contract, and these are all the pieces we talked about before. You re review the phases of the contract, which we talked about earlier. You look at your contract plan and milestones. So one of the first things that will happen um, when you win the contract is you'll sit down with the government with your contract plan and milestones, and you'll suggest to the government how you would like to be paid. So do you get paid, if it's a firm fixed price, do they just take the total, and it's a one-year contract, do they just take the total amount and you get paid every month, one-twelfth? Or do you have milestones set up, and when I meet this milestone, I get X percentage of the total, and when I meet this milestone, I get this percentage of the total. Government's not going to pay you everything up front because they don't trust that you're going to do the work, just like you wouldn't do that in your normal business. So you have to figure out what the scheme is to get paid. Um, Review the QASP, how, they, how are they going to evaluate your quality? Make sure that you've got systems in place to fix that. Review all the deliverable requirements, make sure you understand the service levels, and that whole contract baseline that we talked about. So those are the kinds of things that we're getting involved in. This QASP 
is the tool that the government or the contractor has developed to figure out how they're going to conduct surveillance. So they'll, um, you know, if you're if you're just selling commercial items, you're probably not going to have a cost, right? Because it's that's one of the simplifications they make with commercial contracts. But these are the points at which quality checks are going to occur. The core is the one that's responsible for coming in and verifying that you've met performance requirements there. And if you fail to meet the cost requirements, they're going to notify the CO, and the CO is going to initiate action. So you may, if there's an award payment or an incentive fee, you may not get that. Um, you may be issued a cure notice, which means get it fixed within 30 days. You may be terminated. You may achieve a poor performance rating. So if, you, if you're not meeting the cost requirements, the contracting officer is going to initiate some sort of action. Um, if it's a firm fixed price commercial items, so this means you're just selling your normal commercial, the same products you would sell to commercial entities, you're selling to this group, to the government. Um, they're going to issue you a delivery order for how many products it wants to order. I'm going to order 10,000 of this particular uh, certain product. Then you create the product or secure it from whatever source you have. You deliver it to the government location. They count the quantity, and then they accept the shipment, and then you invoice the government, and then you become the government pays you within 30 days. So for a normal commercial type contract, this is as simple as the process is. You know, pretty much they order, you deliver, and then you get it accepted. If it's a fixed price contract, um, the government will start the contract containing all the products and services that they request in the RFP, and then you gave them a firm fixed price. Then you agree to the milestones of payment distribution and contract award. I just described that. And then we do the work, like we said we were going to do on the contract. And then the company ensures that we actually did the work we said we were going to do. And then um, if we don't do it, the government um, will reject it and issue a cure notice, and then we have to fix what they've mentioned in the cure notice, and then um, they'll pay us within 30 days. If the work costs more, we, the contractor, have to pay the immediately. I feel like the energy level is really low. Why don't we take a 10-minute break and come back in? <laughs> Go exercise. <laughs>